What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the absolute lie that everyone is starting a business. I'm going to explain to you the serious people who are starting a business versus the pretenders. And I'm going to give you an example of the pretenders. You'll see someone who'll come on YouTube and say, hey, I tried drop shipping for one week or I tried drop shipping for 30 days. This is a person who is trying to use YouTube to get money by getting views. They're not trying to start a business because literally you're looking at being in drop shipping for six months to 12 months to actually give it a real go. A week or 30 days, it's not enough time. Also, I'm going to share something with you that happened to me many years ago. Many years ago, I put my phone number on the YouTube channel and I said, if you are a business owner, call me. Now, I received a ton of phone calls and I would go ahead and say that 30% of the people who actually called me were business owners. The other 70% were not business owners. Let me give you an example of not being a business owner. You have a website. You have an e-commerce site, but you hadn't figured out how to get traffic to that e-commerce site. Let me go ahead and break it to you gently. If you have a business that's not making any money, more than likely you're not in business, even though you have an LLC, EIN, business checking, and maybe even a business credit card. See, this is one of the biggest, most fascinating lies on the internet, that you have a multitude of people who are interested in starting businesses and are actually running businesses. You have a bunch of people who have set up an LLC, EIN, business checking, maybe have a business credit card, and they have the facade of setting up a business. It looks like a business, but when it comes down to doing the work, getting the leads, closing the deals, making money, that part is missing. And if you're out here thinking, man, if I start a business, there's so much competition. Now, let me go ahead and give you an example of where there's a bunch of competition. Toro, bunch of competition. Airbnb, bunch of competition. Amazon FBA, bunch of, well, let's go ahead and say there was a bunch of competition, but to really get an Airbnb, not an Airbnb, but an Amazon FBA product up and running, you're gonna need a minimum of five to 10,000. And that right there knocks a lot of people out. I would say with the Amazon FBA business, it was a lot of people jumping in. And anything that you see heavily promoted online as the best, overall business for you to get into, that's more than likely a very competitive business because everyone is running through those gates to get their business started. But let's go ahead and look at when I was in the storage auction business. What is the storage auction business? You would go to these facilities and they would raise up the door and you would bid on the contents of that storage unit. And I did that, I enjoyed that. and. You would think, based upon the number of people showing up at the auction, there were a lot of people in that business, but the reality was, it wasn't a lot of people in that business. And once again, I'm gonna give you buying personas. Let's say you're an average person, you heard about storage auctions, and you show up at the storage auctions and you may sell at the flea market. That's an average, that's buying persona number one. Buying persona number two, let's say, you actually have a large storage facility and you buy stuff and you sell it out your storage facility. That's pers buying persona number two. Buying persona number three, you have stores, store or stores, a warehouse, and a lot of capital to buy the storage auction. Depending on where you are, because buying persona number one, buying persona number two, buying persona number three, we're all in the storage auction business 
but they were in various degrees because when I was in the storage auction business, one of the things I used to do was watch who was always buying because here's the thing, unless you were just statically rich to come out and consistently buy storage units and to consistently buy them, that's just not going to work. So one of the things that I figured out was the people who consistently bought storage units were store owners. And these are people who were stored for open five. Some of these people stored for open seven days a week. I know one guy who actually had a store in a storefront and it used to be a Goodwill. And Goodwill shut down and moved to a larger location and he took it over. Let me go ahead and give you his operation. This guy would make thousands of dollars off of t-shirts. I would go into his store and the majority of his store was t-shirts, clothing, small stuff. And in the back he would have the larger stuff. But this guy was making thousands of dollars a day off of selling used t-shirts because Here's the thing, and this is part of something else that we'll be discussing. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit the bell notification, and be sure to watch this video two or three times. The way he had stuff set up was it was conducive to, and the store was open seven days a week. So he was making money every day of the week, and this is why he always had money. Now. One of the things that happened when I got into the storage auction business was I was a very much a nerd. I was very much embracing online sales. I was very much about Craigslist, eBay, anywhere online I could stick something and sell it. That was my modus operandi. And a lot of the early storage auction people did not do that. They were completely clueless to selling stuff online. And one of the things, this is where I copied this guy's rollout, where he had all this stuff, but I did it online. And this is where I began to list thousands of items online, where I can always have stuff being presented to be sold in an auction format. I didn't understand what I was doing, because back in those days, I was selling on eBay, I was selling on Craigslist, and I had my own operation and none of these guys were doing it. And this enabled me to get to be one of the prominent storage auction buyers fairly quickly. Now, how did I get do that? Number one, there wasn't as much competition as I thought. I would go to the auction. I remember I went to this one auction where there must have been about 120 people there. And one of the things I learned was certain auctions drew more people than others. And this place literally had an auction every three months. They would have 30, 40, 50 units, and this drew a large crowd. And I went to that auction and I was like, man, there's a lot of people here. It's gonna be really competitive. They had 52 units, I believe. And at the end of the day, I walked away with 12 even though there was a hundred, because here's the thing, and this is something that you guys should really understand. Once again, the pretenders, the people who have the LLCs and all this other stuff. I want you to think, when is the last video that you saw on YouTube on how to get customers? You don't see those videos. And the people who are really in business, really making money, they have figured out that part of their business where they can get customers because when I put that phone number on the YouTube channel and I had all these people calling me, I was really much nicer than I am today. Because today, if I, I think about putting the number, the phone number up there, and literally what I would do today is just hang up on someone who's unqualified. I was like, look, you don't have a business, you're not making any money, sorry, I'm not gonna talk to you. And just hang up and just do it that way. Because the first time I listened to them, I heard their desire, I heard their urgency, that they wanted to start a business. I could hear that in them. But here was the thing. With the phone call, I had a training session, a consulting session, and the phone call was to get people into that. And of the 30% of the people who actually had businesses, I was closing about 75% of them on the first call. And here's something else. If I had set up a CRM, CRM is customer relationship management software, and just 
kept contacting those folks, I feel that my conversion rate would have been in the 90 something percent range because everyone that had a real business and they had listened to me, they had made some steps forward, but they didn't do it correctly. So there was a lot of things that I could have established. And this is something else that I really think about setting up today and setting it up. And I'll even tell you, setting it up on a automated basis. You call, there's a voicemail that's saying, hey, hi there, dear business owner, looking really forward to talking to you. Please leave the following emails, information in the voicemail. How much money your business makes, how many employees you have, how much you use for advertising. And this would be a way for me to cut out all of the worthless flim flam calls because essentially, Real business people, and this is something I learned in sales, real business people like efficiency, don't like to waste time. When you're calling them to set an appointment, you can set an appointment in 30 seconds if you know what you're doing. Because these folks do not want to be on the phone all day with a stranger. If they feel that you can help them, yeah, they're open to meeting you in the future. But the gist of what I'm saying is, do not be afraid to start your business once again, outside of those businesses that got interneted, if that's a word, interneted, because this is what happens when a business comes to the internet. A lot of people are getting into it. A lot of people are pushing it. It becomes very competitive and it becomes very hard to make money in. I am in Atlanta, Georgia. At the moment, I don't know how many because I only look in one section of Zillow, but every day I see three to four new houses that were former Airbnb houses on Zillow with, a, once again, real estate market is starting to really calm down. I'm seeing people put up houses that are appropriately priced for their location. Yet I still see people putting up a house in the hood, fully furnished, beautiful this, beautiful that. We just want $5,000 a month. And that house should be renting for anywhere from 1,800 to about 2,400 a month. But once again, you have a lot of bad business people who feel that they can get into business on a short term without understanding the long term. I'll give you an example, and you can find this video on Zillow. It's about a guy who has five homes and he rents them to travel nurses only. He is making more money than a guy who has almost a hundred properties because he dove into his business once again, this guy, before he got into the real estate space, guess what he did for a living? He was a salesman. So he knew how to analyze, how to set stuff up, how to be ready, how to react. And he literally talked himself into a million dollars a year in deals on five properties because he was renting the travel nurses and he knew all of the things that they needed. Once again, do not be a afraid to get in the business. Do not be afraid to start something. And here's something that I want you guys to understand. The beginning, it's going to be tough. In the beginning, it's going to be hard. Now, why is it going to be tough? And why is it going to be hard at the beginning of your business? You're doing something you have never done before. It makes sense. Like you go in the gym and you've never lifted weights and you get under the weight and it's like, man, that's a lot of weight. You've never done this before. So the fact that it's hard should be normal because you've never done this before. And if you apply yourself and study, and I'm going to give you the things you want to study marketing and you want to study sales. Those are the two things you want to study the most because essentially what you will see on the internet at businesses it's all about hustle, promotion, talking about certain things and not actually conducting a real business, not actually doing real business, not putting together a real business where you have a product or service that you're selling to the public, not even knowing where to advertise. If you have a service business, you should be advertising on Google. A lot of people have service businesses and they're advertising on Facebook. Now, once again, let me say this and be really clear. There are people who have service businesses who know how to advertise on Facebook. Facebook can drill it down to the zip code. So you're not just spending a bunch of money running ads all over 
the Facebook website. But there are a lot of people who will just go start listing Facebook ads without the knowledge, without the detailed analysis that they would need to correctly run Facebook ads. But once again, if you're running a heating and air business, you should be on Google. If you're running a car wash, you should be on Google. Because a lot of people will go to Google and it's like car wash near me. That's the biggest search, car wash near me. And if you're near them, guess what? You'll come up on the website. So I have a friend who has a car wash and he told me a story one day. Whenever he has a customer that has a problem, he just gives them a free car wash. And I was like, why do you do that? And he told me, he said, a free car wash is not even close to the lost business he would have if this person gets pissed off and go leave a negative review online. And literally, when you go online and you see businesses online, you'll see a bunch of negative reviews. And these are people who got pissed off, went online and left a negative review. And his, heart, his car wash doesn't have one negative review. He says, hey, I'm really sorry that happened to you. Today, we're gonna to give this car wash to you for free. And he said that usually solves it and then they're in the better mood, but he will not let someone roll out of there angry because they get angry. Pretend this is my phone. They're gonna go online and it's like, hey, I was at such and such business and the service was absolutely terrible. This happened to me today. That's what they're gonna do. Now, here's something that I find to be really funny. And this is one of the reasons that I always fill out surveys and stuff for businesses I appreciate because many people, when they get good service, they ignore it. But when they get bad service, pretend this is my phone. There are complete dogs and the service is trash. That's what people do. And if you ran a business, you would know that because anyone that's been in business for two or three years knows how people behave when they're angry and upset. An angry, upset customer will go straight to whatever online website like me. I had a business and this is funny. I had someone get upset with me and they left the comment for a martial arts studio because of the name. Even though I wasn't teaching martial arts, it was hilarious. But one of the things that you have to understand and I want you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, watch this video two or three times is the number of people who are really trying to set up a business, start up a business, is not as great as you would think. It's just not. Now, it's April. We got this new training. It's gonna be in the description and it's gonna be in the first comment. Get this new training. What this new training is about mindset and money and it's absolutely free because I feel that you should know money management before you start your business. You should have a positive mindset and this is all new training is set up for you to win when you start your business because this is one of the areas that people get in trouble. They'll start a business and they don't understand what they should and shouldn't be doing. And this will help you get your finances in order before you start your business. This is the new training. Hopefully you will like it. My name is Glendon Cameron and I will see you in the next video. Once again, it's gonna be in the first comment and it's gonna be in the first and it'll be in the description of the video. This free training will help you organize your money in a way that will literally blow your mind.